All right. Hello, hello, Scorpios. Okay, Scorpios, this is your very first message for your month of May's energy. Uh, please check the description box because I will be doing more than one video. That's the way it's been working out. Uh, a lot of different energies and cards and oracles this month. Uh, it is Taurus and Gemini season and there's been a lot of Taurus energy that's spotlighted. That's your opposite. So, um, and please keep in mind, it could be for rising sign, moon sign. So you can also check out the May monthly messages for your particular rising sign and moon sign. Um, so working with dragons a lot for this month and the karma cards, which bring in planets, zodiac signs. Um, I got the charms. Ooh, I just, as I look over, I see a swan and I see like a whale tail. Ooh, okay. There was Sagittarian 1130. Um, let's see. And then a lot of Taurus. So, and this could just reflect for, um, potentially the month of May, right? Um, and Gemini energy. So, um, I give dates and times and as always take it how it resonates for you. Lots of different, uh, Scorpios potentially listening. And so, uh, and I pull characters, places, and different messages to give more clarification and guidance for individuals. And I throw out times and dates. So I saw 5 1, so the very beginning. By the way, it is the 1st of May, as I am doing your monthly for May, Scorpios. It's been quite an interesting ride since Taurus season. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, I saw 5 5, 5 9, 5 5 9, uh, 5 6. So, as well as 5 22. I did see 440, so 44 as well. Maybe some Aries energy. And I saw 444 for you guys. <laughs> um, wow, so let's just get started. I'm going to pull charms first. That's what I've been doing. It's been interesting. Some I've started with the karma cards uh, and the dragon oracle messages. and But when we get into tarot, right, and we get into the characters and the people and relationships... It gets a little messy sometimes, right? Anyways, it was crazy. So Virgos and Libras had some crazy, crazy readings. I added in the words. So we'll see what I do for you guys. Scorpios, here's your charms. I just grabbed a few. The anchor, oh my gosh, and planet. This looks like giant uh, Jupiter. Is this one Jupiter, the one that has... You get Jupiter. So I'm definitely saying the planet here. That's. I think that's Jupiter. Maybe it's Uranus. I don't know. Oh, but I'm saying, and it, and I saw the planet. So really, with these karma cards, it's really fascinating. It really did kind of pull in a lot of Piscean energy, but I'm seeing wisdom and stuff, zodiac astrology. As I was shuffling the cards for you guys, um, let me show you the karma cards. So this is the new one. I did open it for this month with the Tauruses for their birthday. I see a little Virgo energy there too, <laughs> but Monty Farber's. Um, it's been very interesting. So. Like I said, keep in mind, maybe some of you have Taurus or Sagittarian. That's interesting because I'm not really pulling so much of the other, but you can have other signs. Anyways, the planets kept being spotlighted. So we'll see what the planets have to say. I also have Star Dragons by Paolo Barberi. Uh, and Dragon Path has been beautiful. Uh, messages connected with the dragons by Caroline Mitchell. And then Dragon Magic messages. So... As well as your tarot this month, going to be Tarot of Dragons, Sean McKenzie. Um, and you have this anchor. So Scorpio is getting anchored in. Uh, is an anchor. Hmm. Where shall I set the anchor? There's a little bird, a little purse, and a heart. So how many total? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. So change. Getting anchored in. This makes me think of sailor or navy. Understand a boat. There is an, an eight, an infinity, a rope around it. How interesting. So water energy. I'm going to put this on the places oracle. I also have some time um, messages that will give deeper messages for individuals. So when I get to that spot, even whatever's going on in this month, it can also show, you know, when something will come to fruition. You know, different things like that. Okay, let's get, I see the Eiffel Tower, and I see love, and you do have the heart and the bow and arrow. 
interesting in the whale tails what I saw. So, um, this is the little bird to me. The little birds always represent messages. The green bird. Weird. Where do I want to put this one? I want to put this one on the on the dragon path from these g dragon guardians. Um, the heart actually is a red heart. It uh, has it's red around. I feel like another one, maybe Virgo. Um, one of these open hearts, like a cookie cutter or something, was in another one, but it had black rim. This one is a red lined heart. Hmm. Where do I want to put this one? I'm going to put this one on the tarot. Yeah. And then there's a purse. Oh my gosh. So I'm pulling in so much Taurus energy for you guys. <laughs> um, so maybe I realize sometimes maybe even uh, some of the people could be cross watchers, right? Uh, watching it for other people. Hello, Tauruses. Okay. you got a gold purse. This is like a little handbag purse. Okay. Seriously, for the birthdays for Tauruses, I did uh, a mini accessory picking accessories. Okay. Um, and so this is kind of what it's making me think of. I'm going to put it on a, even a gift or something. You know, what's in your purse? There's something. <laughs> a golden little purse. I'm going to put it on the character cards to see. Anyways, um, so in their birthday things, that's why I'm, it's making me think of that. It was a, many accessories. Hmm. And I feel like you have more, you have multiple Taurus people in your life, um, potentially. Or you have it in your chart, for sure, which is really interesting. And it has to do with this timeline, even. And getting anchored in. Interesting, so Sagittarian and Taurus, really popping. Um, maybe a little Libra, because it is cusp energy. But the Venus energy, maybe some of you are even, that could be your Venus. Um, or Scorpio could be your Venus. Interesting, okay. I'm going to see 722 on the clock, 723. Dang, I didn't even get into cards. But um, I'm just noticing that because it makes me think so much of the different birthday um, things. So there was a pink purse, a blue purse, um, a pink purse with a puppy. What was the other? The red but this one be the gold purse. Uh, ooh, okay, where should I start? I'm just going to tell you, it's been getting crazy when I get into the people and the tarot. So this time oracle, we're going to set off to the side. I usually do that at the very end, right? All right, and you're welcome if you would like to just jump to a different section. It can resonate for your whole month, right? Let's start with the planets from the, from the beginning because that's what we started with. I told you when I was shuffling your karma cards here. Uh, I kept seeing planets. I'm going to assume they're going to be like Uranus or Jupiter, um, Saturn. So giant planet. It's like maybe even seeing it. And I want to just see two planets spotlighted. Mars. Okay. You even ruler of Mars. Okay. Scorpio, you are the rulers of Mars. <laughs> and Taurus is Venus. Hmm. Hmm. Energize. There is masculine energy. I'm, I'm not going to take those. I'm just peeking because I already shuffled all these. Neptune, okay, so there's some Piscean energy, dreaminess. So I'm seeing masculine energy coming through um, a lot. This is action, inspiring others. Uh, there's also a spiritual nature to it, even being prepared to sacrifice. Uh, inner thoughts is helping others, inspiring and yielding to others. Hmm, very, uh, and then forcing yourself to, even confronting things. Okay, uh, that was what's under there. Okay, I'm going to put the planets back. Maybe learning more about s astrology or studying the planets. And I'm going to look under the deck. Cancer sign. Interesting. So this is even about history, uh, family history potentially. Um, could have to do with your mother. Mothering. Uh, um, maybe a cancer sign is a mother for some of you. <laughs> I mean, that represents our, the mothering, the, the healer, the nurturer. Uh, but this is the feminine energy, even having this intuition to protect. So, like I said, it could be rising sign and moon sign. So any of those other signs, maybe. Um, so when I think of that, there's Pisces, Cancers, <sighs> Scorpio. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and what was the other one? Mars. So maybe a little Aries, a double Scorpio even. Mm. Attitudes about your past resulting from the history. So this is really tapping into your 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 family history or your mother your mother's side but actually it's family it's nurturing feminine okay wow and uranus look at all the planets another feminine energy aquarian energy um, an unusual example of a different way of looking at things and an unexpected change so this is actually the uranus is transiting through taurus energy um interesting enough those are the planets so okay scorpios for your month of may now i will pull messages for each week as i do with the different cards but take it how it resonates depending on when you get this video right uh and who you're dealing with and who you are you know what i mean um because sometimes if i pull different signs in there you don't have it that in your chart and they're not people in your life then that part's not for you but Take it how it resonates. Let's see. Okay, Scorpios, for your month of May, let's. Uh, what's going on this first week? Most importantly, uh, guidance for signs. Okay, Taurus. Yeah, lots of Taurus. Your beliefs. This is masculine energy. Maybe you're dealing with a masculine uh, Taurus, potentially. Uh, it doesn't have to be this, but this is even taking action towards what you believe How, and thinking about logically the cost of it, <laughs> like material things um, and using the most direct way. There is stubbornness, right? But continuing with this, you know, um, but thinking logically, this is what you value even, right? Spiritually, it's your beliefs and what you value, what you're willing to spend your money on and how much it costs, Um yeah wow taurus energy first and foremost should i keep her down here i'll keep her keep this one 1208 1209 sagittarian there we go uh, i see the house is spotlighted i want to see what this house is diplomacy relationship seventh house yeah scorpio risings potentially uh cancer sign two and responsibility 10th house so capricorn wow 710 Ah, uh, Cancer sign or ten seven. Um, this other house, uh, third house. Your ideas, Gemini energy, feminine Gemini energy. Uh, in in Aries, third house in Aries. So, about your will and what else we got? Pisces, and Gemini. Interesting. Aries, Gemini, Pisces. Okay, Scorpio is dealing with that. All right, so that's our first week. Be in Taurus energy anyways. So it's very fascinating to go with the flow of the energy and what you, your beliefs. All right, uh, Libras was really interesting when I first pulled this because there kept being a duality of masculine and feminine energy. These are interesting cards. They are new to me as well for this month. So uh, keep that in mind too and be patient with me. This is how I'm just reading it. All right, second week for, uh, no way, third house coming in. Oh. <laughs> This is so great, don't you think? And we got the feminine again, the Gemini energy, the thoughts, the communication, um, even about your spirituality, sharing your ideas, um, making plans, short-term thinking and trips around your neighborhood. You know, what are you going to do? Who or what is around you? Wow. Taurus potentially could be in your third house. Doesn't have to be. Interesting. And see the little birdie. There too. Am I bringing the camera down? Yeah. The houses again. Wow. Underneath there I see Gemini. A lot of Gemini. How fascinating. I mean, it makes sense since this is the energy of the month. So I really appreciate that. But very much about the, the Gemini energy is very feminine. Okay. I'm seeing that like coming in very, um, it's about the emotions of it, how it makes them feel. And ex information to explain feelings, communicating about it. Hmm. Even with siblings, neighbors, people in your community, okay? Uh, around where you you live. It's even about, like, you know, making plans for, you know, going out to lunch or the weekend plans. This isn't about planning deep into the future, you know? It's like, what are you going to do this month? Chatting with people sharing your ideas 
and, and explaining, okay? And now, no way, even your creative ideas. For some of you, maybe Gemini is your fifth house. I mean, these wouldn't apply for all, depending on your rising side. But this is even, well, more feminine energy with children, creativity. This is the house of Leo energy, too. Power of love. Investment gambles and other games. This is interesting. I like, and even your creations, your creative stuff. Hmm. Information, creativity, communication. Very fascinating. Okay. Scorpios. Wow. So moving into that third week uh, in the Gemini energy, what is most spotlighted coming through? I see a lot of the planets we're grabbing. Venus. Oh my gosh. You're getting cherishing. I told you, weird. The Venus energy is so spotlighted. It is very loving and compassionate. And it's an action energy. Taurus energy is very, um, even though this is Venus, uh, it is a masculine energy. Taking the action um, to cherish. Cherishing. Oh my gosh, we've been getting cherishing the day, like almost in all the readings with the star card. So we'll see if that one. Um, enjoying Venus is about beauty. Um, you know, things that are lovely, art. Uh, yeah, charm, art, beauty, music, um, and cherishing good times. These are good. Okay, wow. And I see ninth house, even your spiritual values, long-term thinking and travel. So the duality is coming through, even with the Sagittarius Gemini energy. Um, Sagittarius maybe more feminine as well. And what is to be shared um, even things that you've learned or are, are taught to others. I also see there will be success. Oh, wow. North node in the ninth house for some of you. Like jumping into something new, new learning, new travels, long distance. Wow. That's what I just saw in the card. So one final message for the very ending of May for the Scorpios. Um, wow. Wow. That's the most important thing. Thank you. A sign coming through. Gemini. Damn, guys. Uh, damn. Sorry, excuse my language. But um, I think this is fascinating. Venus is what's spotlighted. This is good. No way. And even, once again, so this Gemini energy is coming in as masculine. So more than one energy and action. What you want to be known what is believed about and using the quickest way once again most direct way and the quickest way um it's simplifying and being direct and to the point um even regarding your career your responsibly your responsibilities your own success even becoming a person of power and status so masculine energy pulling with uh, career sector, Gemini, Capricorn. Interesting. The thoughts are very emotional, you know. Little, wow. Okay, I'm going to set those off to the side. That is pretty crazy. Um, I had been reading sometimes, you know, out of the book, but I'm going to share. I'm going to read it straight across. So on these cards, we have the spiritual nature and whether it's it's masculine, action-oriented, or feminine, and emotionally, uh, you know, the emotions of it. Um, and then we have what's in the mental, the thoughts, the thinking about it. Um, and then we have the physical, how it affects our physical our surroundings, our body, our life, the 3D. So spiritually, this Taurus energy is taking action on what you believe, your true beliefs, you're feeling guided even, spiritual beliefs even. These dragons might have more messages because I'm seeing this beautiful connection with all these. Okay. Um, and then there's these emotions spiritually, your your own ideas about um usually this is a little bit um third house to me, sometimes even communicating with your, you know, with your neighbors and your siblings about how it makes you, you know, your feelings and emotions. And what you want to do and cherishing the time. How do you take this action knowing how to cherish 
and then sharing, communicating even what you want to be known about love, about beauty, uh, and thinking logically the costs of things on these short-term thinking trips for, you know, weekend getaways or traveling, communicating, and enjoying the conversation, enjoying your time around, and then uh, mentally even sharing what you believe about these things, about love, about Venus, about art, about travel, in your community, you know, siblings, neighbors, the weather. <laughs> oh, wow. And then being very direct and just, you know, so use the most direct way and think about who or what is around you, where you are, of places of beauty, where there's art, of Venus areas, you know, um, Places to go that you find beautiful things. I, I bet you will find maybe the art gallery and different things like that. A musician or something. And when the characters come into play. Um, and then using the quickest end way to this. Okay. Wow. What are we on time? 2119. All right. So I kind of thought at first I was thinking Scorpios. I might jump straight into you know, some of the character and stuff, because when I get deeper into it, and it, these are always a little more uplifting, right? Looking to the stars, uh, looking to dragon guardians. And so sometimes they get a little, little messy. You know, you know, Scorpio, these are the things we got to be able to talk about. I had, yeah uncovering things okay let's get the little birdie what the little birdie says i'm really thoroughly this is another one for the tauruses um taurus season i decided to unveil and open for this first time this dragon path and i'm thoroughly enjoying getting to know these dragons as well and i hope you do too so here's this little bird you green bird <gasps> or brawn is underneath there wow so um, I'm just saying, I'm seeing like this giant, you know, it looks like a full moon. So in particular, the full moon in May is going to be in Sagittarian energy. And I feel like it's interesting because even as like a whole, uh, of, I feel like that's, people are kind of drawn to wanting to travel. I mean, it's the summertime coming up, right? <laughs> or things like that and get out in nature. Hopefully the weather is nice. Um, the 15, no, the 14th. I'm seeing the 14th or 1 4. Or brawn. So that's what's underneath there. I do read out of the book with these ones. That's very fascinating, Scorpios. All right, here we go. Let me see. How's the camera? I might adjust it just a bit. So go off to the side. All right, 23 as we jump into the dragon path messages for the Scorpios for the month of May. I like how this is being simplified even, and I'm getting one for each, and it's like so lined up. <laughs> I've already shuffled all these um, meditating and thinking of uh, Scorpio's energy for the month of May, but I'm giving it another little good uh, shuffle. So, especially this first week, dragons and this Taurus energy for the Scorpios, what do we have? Yay. Okay, I got Destiny and Orbron. Yeah, so Orbron was the first one we saw. 14, 15, we're going right in flow, which is fascinating. That's what I'm seeing. Like, everything feels like in alignment, even of the energy of the month for you. Um, yeah. I'm Roman numerals again. So, we got the 15. Destiny is right here. Interesting. I'm going to set it here. Orbron. Oh, I'm noticing both. Like, there is big circles. Weirdest thing, I'm noticing the circles. Um, and so the big moon, even like the an eclipse or something. There's a circle, a shield with all of these. Okay, I actually brought up... Um, oh, man. I can't remember which sign, but I forgot to... I set a charm here, <laughs> interesting enough, and it has the circles of healing... Um, and at this point, clearly I have not opened it up, but I did mention 
to the Gemini's like during their when we get to their birthday season. So it depends on when you get this video. Maybe I've already um, uploaded some pick a card, pick a dex, pick a crystal. However, I have decided to do it for the Gemini season. Um, or in between, because I was thinking of doing this for theirs. And I'm just seeing all of these. Maybe there's something there for you. So check my channel. And if not, come back later on in the middle of the month or something and see. Um, this one's Elena Fairchild. It's, it's circles of healing. Color. Words. Mandela. Mandela. I'm going to read these. What is this? Part of this destiny. Hmm. The 15th being spotlighted. Okay. I have look at... I see 315 and 314, so Piscean of chance a little bit there. And maybe Capricorn. All right, so cherishing this stuff. No way Gaia is under there. And this is the first time I've seen Gaia in, uh, wow, 31. 1531. Hmm. 631, 6-4. Wow, it looks like this Venus energy, cherishing even Gaia. This is like Mother Earth energy. Wow, and her knee. 10, 20, 33. Wow, these ones are like the shift, the color of these have changed so much. And I have not read, um, I have not read these guardians out of the book. So we'll see if they come through. Wow cherishing okay so as we move into the gemini energy that third week um interesting enough because like i said i see this in 14 15 you're still handling this but this could very much reflect uh you know that full moon in sagittarian maybe it's going back a little bit uh what was the last full moon i'm like what was that one in <laughs> anyways i don't know so the new moon, even planting scenes in Taurus season. And then we've got the full moon in the Sagittarian energy at the end of the month of May. Okay, what other dragon messages for the dragon path for the Scorpios? There we go. Ooh, Mordwin. And asking the questions. I think this is also sending someone, helping you, like bringing people in interesting enough 28 the 28th being spotlighted is an important time 628 as well cancer sign 610 gemini's okay because cancer sign was there all right uh final message let's see get one more for the gemini's for this last week it's why i say gemini's for the gemini season maybe some of you are gemini okay keep that in mind and scorpio's in your chart um or the venus energy dang venus maybe gemini's your venus and even uh, loving to communicate and sing and art writing what you want to be known sharing scene gold <laughs> the 12 12 10 11 12 Hmm. Okay. Here we go. Single, I feel like, came out with a different a different sign as well. I'm going to look underneath there. Actramus. Interesting. The 17th. 1217. Okay. Maybe some Sagittarian coming through with that as well. I'm going to set that one there. We're going to read the books for you. For Orbron, Destiny, Mordwin, and Singold. These are your dragons that have come through for this month of May, Scorpios, for you. Now I'm going to read the book and give you more clarification. Orbron. I open it up to Grace, 88 and 89. Hmm. And keep in mind, too, when I do give times, dates, these can be years. They could be, uh, so there could be Leo energy, potentially, um, or 88 could be, you know, a birth year or important year, 89 even. Dragons have an issue with the word love because we continually misuse it. Oh, wow. I agree with that. So they have often said for grace, which they tell me is more encom encompassing and authentic. 
Grace is a deep acceptance of all that is within and without us. It means the end of struggle without embracing the whole of us as we truly are. This dragon flies. I open it up to grace. You are more than you can possibly imagine. Wow. 16. The 16s. Hmm. No way. I see 16, 16. So 7, 7. Okay. So we're going to go back to destiny. Right? Let's see. Orbron was the first one. Okay. Wow. Right in flow. 14, 15, 16, guys. Wow. I see 82 and 83 with this one. Um, Potentially even pulling. So the 515 might be important, but I also see, you know, potentially Aries. Uh, why do I say Aries? I didn't mean that, but okay. <laughs> Leo, Scorpio, Capricorn. Reconnect to your physical body and get out of your head. Oh my gosh. Scorpios, I feel like that one's always the same thing. Get out of your head. Worried about the cost of things. Um, there's Scorpio Taurus right here too. And maybe Gemini. This is a very fascinating that this was the first card, guys. Because I read it different ways. There's even Capricorn potentially. Um, 10, 12 or 6, 10. Gemini, 6, 11. Libra. Um, and so when I was cleaning up from the last, from Libra's and Virgo's videos, they are the only ones so far at this point. We'll see how I decide to do this, but, um, I literally, so I pulled the little words, okay? And as I was cleaning up and I kind of moved the box around, and, uh, this, uh, popped out as I was shuffling, getting ready for yours. Rough head, rough was set there from a Libra energy on you know, like that was just left over, but head popped out. And so I was like, Scorpios, I feel like there's always lots of that, like getting in your head, uh, being in your head, which to me is also very, you know, um, Gemini, um, Libra, maybe Aquarian. I'm not really, you know, Virgo. I mean, all of us can have this being stuck in our head and not communicating it. And maybe there's even a little eight of swordsy. Okay. Get out of your head. Reconnect to your physical body. Get out of your head. If Orbron has turned up today, it is to reassure you that you can achieve what is required. You may have to dig deep within yourself and maybe do this for the long haul. But you can and will succeed. This striking red dragon's connection is firmly grounded and, in effect, connects to our base chakra. He therefore relates to everything that makes up our physical lives and the world we create for ourselves. Orbram's message is a simple one. Nothing in this world you call home is insurmountable. Nothing is too big to deal with. Get your feet back on the ground and anchor yourself into your physical reality. Dang, and I got the anchor, right? You, your charm was the anchor, and I did set it on the places to go even, potentially. Wow. Wow. Get your feet back on the ground and anchor yourself into your physical reality. Having your head in the clouds will not give you the answers you desire or require. Connect to your base chakra and reconnect to your physical body. Get out of your head and into your body. Release your ever tumbling and swirling thoughts. When you are more grounded in this way, you will be better placed to deal with the matters that, you're, that are demanding your attention. You will then be able to handle them fully and with ease, freeing you to move forward. Your time is best spent tackling whatever is demanding your time. Deal with it totally and then you will be in a position to move forward. 8-4. Although Orbron is a tough talking dragon, sometimes you need to hear it as it is. He is a great ally when you need to get a job done and deal with the here and now. Orbron finishes his message with seek the path of least resistance. The more you tussle with a problem, the tighter the noose becomes, eventually strangling the solution. And I, said, I like how it says seek the path of least resistance in both of these. It is used the most direct way and seek the path of least resistance, right? Even in your communication, 
and using the quickest way. And maybe it is about writing it down, communicating it, because sometimes we get stuck in our, our heads and our thoughts. Uh, even if you're, you're dealing with, you know, money, okay. Uh, and, you know, spending, um, writing down a budget or, you know, doing the math, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, your journey. Okay. As we go over here, even your ideas, Short-term thinking. It doesn't have to be so long-term, you know. I mean, when we get to the time oracle, there might show deeper, you know. But planning the things for this month, you know. What's next weekend? What are you doing? I mean, even if you want to push it out into the summer. and we'll, Because I did see summer, so we'll see. This is your some destiny, 85. It is your life, your journey, your path. You walk it your way. It's your ideas. It's about your, you. Destiny is a mighty dragon of great authority. She has no time for fluffiness, ego, or human dramas, as she puts it. She and her kind have been hidden in the depths of the earth for eons, waiting for us to be ready to take back our power and stand in our individual and collective might. She wants to galvanize us, us into action so that we stand strong against adversity. And, if necessary, fly in the face of authority to challenge systems that are no longer fit for purpose. 86 and 87, this is even about change. Uh, and if you want change, you need to be that change. Not wait for others to do it for you. You do not need their permission to live your life the way your way. Nor can they absolve you from your responsibility. It is your life, your journey, your path. You walk it your way light and fluffy will not create lasting changes on your planet have you ever tried moving a large square flat bottom stone uphill it is impossible as humans you need to come together and work in union not isolation take responsibility for who you are hold the vision of what you wish to create and work together with others we are facing periods of change and at times adversity we as people of earth can only achieve a more secure future if we come together and work for the good of all we can be the change. The time for division has passed. It's time for us to unite, collaborate, and work in unison. Maybe even with Leo for some of you. Because I got 87, 86, a lot of eights. Maybe something in August even. Um, This is interesting. And I'm noticing this is you being the change you want to see, getting it out of your head. And then even traveling, talking, communicating with your community. This is coming together with people. Um, and cherishing that time and beauty. There's the Venus energy. Mordwin. Okay, Singled is right. Let's see, 10, 11, 12. I do want to go back. The Mordwin is quite a bit... Uh, further back. So, in this Gemini energy, even the singled, okay, this is maybe potentially even pulling in some Sagittarian energy. Um, but I do see even Cancerian, okay, seven six seven seven, um, twelve thirteen, twelve fourteen. What else did I see? Twenty five six seven eight twenty eight. Twelve twenty-eight, maybe there is a little Capricorn, and ten twelve. Do that which lifts your heart to bring forth your deep inner smile from within. Okay, what you want to be known, what is it believed about, and use the quickest way. Sin gold is the dragon of gratitude, and he arrives when we need to take notice of and acknowledge old negative patterns. He asks us to recognize old emotional blocks. For example, these can be self-doubt fear or jealousy he has these words to say about gratitude review your life to date and find things to be grateful for so you can rejoice in who you are acknowledge the fears envy guilt or anger within accept the niggling doubts admit they are present for they are part of you but you have no need to dwell here for they are part of your past and no longer relevant to your life now Instead, revel in the pure joy of being alive. Seek the positive in your existence here on earth. 
and cover the things to rejoice about and do that which lifts your heart to bring forth your deep inner smile from within. Seeking even a totem to act as a reminder. This can be an object a small enough to carry or wear daily, maybe a beautiful shell or a crystal. Wow, and maybe it's something in your purse, um, the anchor, a little heart, whatever it is. Wow. Set the intention within it to stay focused on being joyous and grateful so that when this totem is on your person, it reminds you that all is as it should be. You are learning the lessons of gratitude and you are exactly where you should be now. Think, chant, write, or sing joy, happiness, peace, laughter, but above all, gratitude. Put it to music. Dance with it. Practice gratitude num numerous times daily until joy and feeling grateful become an intrinsic part of your everyday life. Count your blessings until an attitude of gratitude resides in your heart and settles you in a new pattern of being. Go forward with love deep in your heart oh my gosh scorpios i mean there's cancer there too i feel it like i read it and i'm like feel it in my tummy all bubbling up i feel like the i'm pulling like i said some sagittarius but i i feel like virgo got this as well and seriously I, I was like that song where it says but above all i wish you love i already did this i'm like this is deja vu i'm having <laughs> Um, wow, um, because that, that Whitney Houston song and the bodyguard even, you know, um, Kevin Costner, <laughs> that's, I was like, who is that in that show? Wow. A lot of Kevins actually. Hmm. Interesting. And there's, like I said, that Cancerian, maybe Libra as well, Scorpio, um, Maybe there is Sagittarius is or this is feminine a mother even uh, Libra or Sagittarian or a Cancer sign. Maybe Capricorn Gemini. Wow, I love this. I, I do. I, like the messages are very beautiful. Okay, so Mordwin, this Venus. I feel like this. If I remember correctly, this is about bringing people into your life during this time. Even the love energy, the Venus. 2528. Let's see. 2-8. Maybe even some Aquarian or the 28th. I see, like, yeah. Ooh, Act Ramus. Okay, I have to go to this one first. <laughs> this was underneath the deck, the final one. 15, 16, 17. Wow, so I am so interesting enough. I am pulling some Virgo. Okay, Sagittarian and maybe Capricorn during this end of the month. Uh, or this Gemini energy. Understand that. Okay, Scorpios. Um, the 17th. No way. We did 14, 15, 16, 17. This one is 12. 12, 17. And there's Virgo. 9, 2. Integrating the higher vibrations within your work and life. Wow. This one. Oh, I feel like I saw this before. The Peacekeeper. 92 and 93, 7th ray. Actramus connects with the Actarian civilization. Actarians. Hmm. The peacekeepers of the galaxies. This beautiful dragon announced himself to me by stating, I am the dragon Actramus of the 7th golden ray dimension. I am kin to the Atlantean dragons who were 7th dimensional but chose to work with the 5th dimensional beings of Atlantis and oversee the raising of their vibration to the 7th dimension. If Actramus has joined your reading today, heed his words. The time has come for you to begin integrating with 7th dimensional golden ray energy and initiate the process of anchoring its frequency into your being. This will enable you to shift the old layers of 3D energy and release it naturally. It heralds the next phase of your incredible journey. Holding a clearer vibration allows us to view the world without judgment. Be at ease with ourselves and let go of negativity. By accepting Actramus into your life, you're acknowledging you're ready to shift old DNA coding and integrate the higher vibrations into your life. 9-3. Oh my goodness. 
Um, I think this is beautiful. Seeing this is like that finality. And I, where I set Actronis here, I make sure you can see these dragons uh, fully. Um, looking, even looking down upon. I think it's beautiful. I'm seeing so much about anchoring. I mean, your charm was getting anchored in. Um, anchoring in into a seventh dimension energy frequency with the Venus, with the love. Um, so the places even on earth, maybe these will give you guidance of uh, even getting anchored into. And the Virgo energy, interesting. And Sagittarian with that. Fascinating. Okay, more twin. 28. These the Grand Master Dragons. You can be sure you're in great company if you have a Grand Master walking beside you. Oh, there's Merlin, potentially. Continuing Serene, Platinum, Illuminaire, anchoring the light into the planet. Ooh, Archangel Uriel. Spiritual Warrior. 11 2, 11 3, 1 12, 1 13. The Philosopher. I'm getting closer. <laughs> oh, okay. These are the guardian dragons. Each of the guardian dragons has a counterpart. They are not necessarily male and female, although some are but a balance of each other, like yin and yang. There is the healer. That came in the other one. Asclepius. As I said, Asclepius. Uh, Mordwin. Here we go. Only you are the master of your destiny. Oh, my gosh. Once again, this is so interesting. It is there was, with the dragons? It's really mentioning how you know you have to be the. It's the change. <laughs> be the change you want to see, and be, you're in control of your life, the master of your destiny. Um, if if you want to see change, take the lead with it. Mordwin, how fascinating and cherishing this is action. 125, I told you, I was even getting a little Aquarian energy, um, 2, 8, 28, but I also see 125, uh, potentially 12, 5, Sagittarian as well, and maybe Capricorn, um, and the 28th, even 528, Gemini, okay, Mordwin is an awesome character, hugely powerful and all-compassing, he will open doors, Put people or situations in your path which all lead you to living your divine purpose. It is his responsibility to guide you to fulfill the contract you made in spirit before coming to earth for this incarnation. He says, you are the power. Accept it as your own. 126, 12, 6. Only you are the master of your destiny. I think that's fascinating because destiny was right before. Wow. His message is clear, so ignore him at your peril. You have a job to do, so let's get on with it. You have the tools and the knowledge you need. Your self-doubt hinders you. Your time is now. The world needs to see your light. Step into your heart, and I will take the journey with you. <gasps> the Venus. Oh, my gosh, guys. Um. Wow. So, I... <sighs> You see how this is very interconnected. So regardless of what 3D stuff that comes through, understanding those things and releasing and letting go, or maybe it is very beautiful traveling, uh, all this stuff. Wow. And is action, energy oriented, cherishing. The Cancerians really got about cherishing the day, a lot of, about cherish the days the in the now or even the people this is opening doors for you during this time in your community so maybe there'll be even new people that you don't know or they come into play you know um hmm that are part of you know your your soul team vice versa to help each other all right he continues, your role is to take your light out into the world with me as your guide. Together, we are the master creators. As you discover your life purpose, acknowledge your fears and self-doubt, but do not be bound by them, for they cloud your truth. Follow your heart, feeling your way with truth and integrity. 
Wow. Um, yeah, that is the Dragon Path messages. 49, 45 on the clock. Um, I kind of want to take a little break with this. I will finish the next video. So if you're ready to continue on right now, and if not, come back, you know, later when you're ready. Um, there's no rush, you know. Um, but I'm going to come back and jump in and finish up the Dragon um, Oracle and Dragon Magic messages. Connecting with the dragons before we jump into the Dragon Tarot. Where we have the open heart, right? The characters are coming up as well with the purse. And anchor, getting anchored in these different places. Um, and time oracle and gemstones. Wow. And like I was saying, even seeing those circles of healing. And if you feel so guided... Uh, and that's already uploaded, but if not, come back a little later in the month, and I will, I'm pretty sure I'll be opening those ones up. I enjoy uh, learning and sharing, and that's also why I do this, um, and why each month I kind of like to have something new and exciting, um, and they I cycle back through, and it, it, it's all very lovely, and I feel very happy. Actually, Scorpios, I wanted to say with the dragon stuff, it was actually last year, 2023, Right in your birthday season, okay, November, I believe, yeah, maybe it was a little end of October, but, um, and me and a Sag, so Libra and a Sag and a Scorpio, anyway, but this is when, like, I was really being drawn to my, uh, my dragon here, Bumblebee, Jasper, dragon, skull, let's turn his head. I kind of, uh, I kind of, like, I had buried, <laughs> I buried a lot of my rocks, okay? I don't know. I just did, you know, whatever. They needed cleansing in the earth. And I was like, oh, I, they're right over there. And lo and behold, it was out of the earth. And, I, and this is before I even understood or knew, you know, um, that's the whole mystery of it, which is actually very beautiful because things are revealed. More is revealed as we go as well. Um, but... It was like I thought of it, and I'm like, it's right over there. That's where I bury. I was talking about him. I'm like, hmm. I walk over there. My dog, I'm sure, had been digging and helping, and there it had rain and different things. But the, my dragon skull was just sitting up on, above ground, and I was like, what? Anyways, come to find out, you know, that 2024 is the year of the dragon. So, yeah, there's my guidance. And then uh, I had a fascinating thing I wanted to share with you guys before I finish this video. Um, in between the Virgo video, I went to a Sagittarian person who had went on a little, you know, rendezvous and came back with some like souvenirs, trinkets, and she literally had no idea I had, I decided to start working with the dragons and, uh, this month and she, so it was like a reminder out, even with the Leo saying, you know, to watch for these, the dragons coming through. Especially if you're tuning in this month and giving you a little guidance and stuff, you know, even bringing people into your life. Um, because she goes, oh, I went to this this store. I got this business card. Check this out. And she gave me a couple little, you know, little souvenirs, seashells and uh, crystals and rocks and things. And then the business card had a dragon, the green dragon on it. I was like, oh, wow. It was like literally right after my reading. Boom, boom. And I came back so excited. So I think that this is beautiful and I hope that this also comes through for you for the month of May. Thank you so much, Scorpios. Um, and like I said, check the description to go to the other ones. Um, I'm taking the time to just uh, take a little breather now. And sit. I like sitting with it, go stretch my legs, do a nice little walk <laughs> and come back and finish the rest of this for your month of May. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.